The views on a breath of fresh air podcast reflects the parties involved, and we encourage you all to use it as a conversational tool that will lead to personal studies of your own. Hallelujah, 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 hallelujah. Welcome to a Breath of Fresh Air podcast. Here with your hosts, Earl Roberts and Nakaz Gay. As a young person, Christianity can be so foggy, like smoke in the mirrors and so unclear. But we're here to bring you a breath of fresh air. When his brothers saw that their father loved him more than any of them, they hated him and could not speak a kind word to him. Stupid Joseph, stupid coat of many colors. I don't know why daddy liked him so much. Joseph had a dream. And when he told it to his brothers, they hated him all the more. Listen to this dream I had. We were binding sheaves of green out in the field when suddenly my sheaf rose and stood upright while your sheaves gathered around mine and bowed down to it. His brothers said to him, Do you intend to reign over us? Will you actually rule us? And they hated him all the more because of his dream and what he had said. Then he had another dream, and he told it to his brothers. Listen, I had another dream. And this time, the sun and moon and eleven stars were bowing down to me. When he told his father as well as his brothers, his father rebuked him and said, What is this dream you had? Will your mother and I, and your brothers, actually bow to the ground before you? His brothers were jealous of him, but his father kept the matter in mind. Jealousy, deception, and hatred are all themes of this week's episode. We are continuing going through the book of Genesis and exploring the accounts of Jacob's children. We get introduced to Joseph, an innocent lad who many say was a dreamer. We also get to learn more about Judah and his children. In this episode, we are delving into Genesis chapters 36 and 37. So please enjoy. All right. Welcome back to another episode of A Breath of Fresh Air. We appreciate you guys for tuning in another week here. Um, Last week, we left off with the story of Jacob turning to Israel. Um, Yeah. So we see how he met up with his brother, Jacob. They had that family reunion, and it went better than Jacob could have thought. So God is good there. And so this week, we have another interesting story. We're going to start off with... So we're going to introduce you guys to the story of Joseph. He is actually one of my favorite Bible characters. He's, he's up there in my top five. He's up there in my top five. I think I've referenced him a few times before in, in the podcast. And you know what's funny? is like people have like favorite Bible characters. But how much time do you ever hear someone say like, Jesus is my favorite <laughs> Bible character? <laughs> Jesus is like... Uh... The trump card, bro. You know what I mean? <laughs> uh-huh. I think it was you who told me this. I think I, I think you said that you had a pastor or someone say to you that Jesus, in a sense, he was so perfect. Every quality that you could see in everybody else, he was like the perfect balance of everything. So like people don't use him to say, oh, he was like courageous and these kinds of stuff. But Jesus was everything you needed him to be. So people just, you just can't point out a specific quality since everything was balanced. Yeah. I didn't say that, by the way. But that's, that's interesting. <laughs> <laughs> okay, well, I've heard that before. <laughs> yeah, but, but yeah, no, see, and, and that's the thing. You know, like me, I actually, of course, I love Jesus because, you know, that's how every Christian feels. But I love the, Jesus, like the person, because like, I, I just enjoy, I just enjoy reading about him. I enjoy when he gets spicy with people. When he challenged people, you know what I mean? 
Like, and that's the type of stuff where I just be like, yeah, bro, because everybody want to pay Jesus. Oh, this happy white guy. He just always just nice. And you know what I'm saying? But Jesus, Jesus, he he, he, he was firm. You know what I'm saying? Like, I ain't come, I ain't come to bring peace on earth, bro. I come to bring a sword type of situation. And that's the type of thing where I just be like, yeah, I like this guy. I like this guy. You know what I mean? But Joseph, I like Joseph a lot too, because Joseph, to me, Joseph reminds me of me and my youth, just a young guy, not aware. Like, I, I'm not saying that Joseph was unaware, but like, like when, when he was young, he seemed pure. You know what I'm saying? Like before I learned about evil stuff in the world and stuff like that, like how I could just go through and just not be, just not be aware. Like that's how I feel with Joseph. Like he, mm-hmm. he still was like, he's very virtuous, especially how the story begins and talks about him. And he wasn't influenced by the evil around him. So they were in the line of Canaan, right? Yep. Yep. We see how. So, uh, and, oh, go for it. Yeah. And, and that's something to consider though. Like the, the entire world, you know, for the most part, worship idols. These guys did not regard God. There was one person, Abraham, who God said, man, hey, yo, I am me, you know, because he knew that Abraham is like, was like a respectful guy. He was a, a God-fearing man. And he was like, man, ain't nobody else really doing this, bro. Uh, you, your, your, your lineage about to be my chosen people because everybody else don't even really care about me type of situation. And when you really think about that, there's nowhere that God's people could have lived that they would be surrounded by God's people, if that makes sense. Mm. But unless it was just them in the city and no one else. Because no matter what, it would be outside influences. And God made it so that they would live in the land of Canaan. And we could see where um, Isaac and even Abraham, they, they didn't want um, their children to have Canaanite women. We could see how that was problematic. And that just go to show about how they could have a part to play in being a stumbling block to you type of situation. And these are the people you live around. So with, with that being said, we know who, who some of Joseph's brothers were. <laughs> and we can see we can see the environment that Joseph was in, you know, and he still was a person at a young age, 17, who was a righteous, who's a righteous young man. And I feel like that's admirable, you know, because it, it's not easy to do that, especially as a young man. Like I, I know what that's like, you know, growing up in, in our city. And it's like a lot of people don't understand the Bible. A lot of people know, especially from an Adventist standpoint. Is certain things that we we um shed a lot of light on in the Bible that some people might not know about at all. Like some people might legit think Sunday is the Sabbath, you know. Mm. So you live in a world where and everything you want to do is on the Sabbath. Mm. Everything you want to do, you know what I'm saying? You want to go to this dance, it's on the Sabbath, sports event, it's on the Sabbath, you know, whatever. And that 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 plays a part on you and there's times as a as a child when i used to wish man i wish we didn't have to do that i didn't understand i didn't really understand i didn't really understand the sabbath i didn't understand god's law i didn't understand all of these things but i just know that everybody nobody else has to live by this code why me Mm. and we could see where joseph didn't have that demeanor you know that was not his mindset because he dared to you know like how they say dare to be a daniel I feel like (laughs) on a smaller scale, even before that, Joseph was daring to be Joseph, like in front of my brothers, no matter who, you know, and that's, and we're going to see how the guy never changed. Nope. Never changed. Like, you know. So picking up from, picking up from uh, chapter 37, we see how Kazi just said, like they were still in the land of Canaan. And this is the kind of Jacob's family tree. Joseph, a young man of 17 years old, was attending flocks with his brothers, the sons of Bilha and, and Zilpha. And for those of y'all who, you know, just as a, just as a uh, you know, crash yep. course, yep. it was Gad, Asha, Dan, and Naphtali. So Dan and Naphtali were the sons of Bilha, and Gad and Asha were the sons of Zilpha. And they were both like Rachel's and uh, Leah's. They were like their maidservants, children. <laughs> And as he brought their, and so like they were doing some wickedness or evilness and Jake, Joseph told their father. So Joseph wasn't down with whatever Bro. they were doing. And he told no, but on them. On. <laughs> when I first read this, I, I don't know why I completely missed Zilpah. 
I only read Billa the first time. Like, so in my mind, I'm just like, oh, here's Billa's sons. Mm-hmm. You know, but here's Zilpa and Billa. And, and see, and that's what I was talking about, man. So Jacob had 10 sons, right? <laughs> um, out of the 10, we know Reuben, you know, he slept with his father's concubine, right? Mm-hmm. Simeon and Levi. Who Slotted all the second. <laughs> Right, homicidal maniacs they were. You understand? We ain't get the Judah yet. We can oh, put a pin in that. <laughs> right. So we have Issachar and Zebulun, who the Bible doesn't specifically say any of their notorious deeds, if there were any. But now we got uh, Zilpah and 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 Billah's children, God, Asher, Don, Naphtali, like you just said, who d- d- um, this chapter starts off by saying Joseph saw their evil deeds and it's described as evil. You know what I'm saying? So out of the 12, out of the 12 children, Joseph and Benjamin, we don't know of any of their evil deeds, if any. And then Issachar and Zebulun. So that's four out of 12 sons. Mm-hmm. So the majority of your brothers, you, you they know, up to I, no I, good. I, they up to no good. You know what I'm saying? And that's your family. That's the family that you live in, you know, that you're growing up in. And I knew the second to the youngest. So all of these are your big brothers. And you only have two who kind of make sense right now. But the rest of them, like, we don't know what their moral compass was like, you know? It doesn't seem like they really had a moral compass. Exactly. Yeah. So, <clears throat> so, yeah, so now we see, and the Bible just leaves it there. And I wonder what Jacob, I wonder what Jacob, Israel, I'm going to be using the terms interchangeably, just kind of weird calling him Israel, because I'm just so used to calling the country Israel. Some of you using Jacob and Israel interchangeably, but his name is Israel now. Because we yep. see in verse three, the Bible that says, now Israel loved Joseph more than any of his other sons. But I really wonder what Israel really did when, when Joseph came and, and like snitched. Like, hmm. did he like reprimand them? Did he just say, you know what? I'm old. I'm too old for this. <laughs> like, what, what, what was his response? Because I, I mean. Yeah, what, like, I don't know either, bro, because like <laughs> the Bible doesn't say what his response was. Right. And. Hmm. You can use that and say, oh, because the Bible doesn't say that, oh, he, he didn't, you know, discipline them. But at the same time, the Bible doesn't say whether he did or not. So, you know, he may have disciplined them, may have not. But the fact of the matter is, these guys, okay, so Isaac, chill do it. You know, we don't describe Isaac as being like, you know, like a bad person. You know, he, he's kind of biased the way he dealt with his sons. We have Jacob and Esau. You know, the Bible describes Esau as being not of God, like, like an evil guy in a sense. And mm-hmm. then Jacob was like righteous man. But we knew what Jacob did. And at the time, these guys, they were as crazy as it has gotten. But one generation below, Jacob's sons, they're taking crazy to a whole new level. Like these guys, it's like, what thing will they not do? Because like from you, from you, kill a whole city, spoil the city take all of their wives and I guess kids, maybe what, what wouldn't you do? No lie. And then you have another one who sleeps with you, your concubine. That's like, do they respect Jacob is what I'm saying. You know, and, and when Jacob tried to say something in, in a form of reprimanding, yo, why do you do this? Why do you, why do you put this sin on me? The people are going to come back and kill us. They, they don't even care what their daddy got to say. They're like, yo, you want our sister to be a prostitute? Like to say my, the things that I hold greatly, I don't mm-hmm. care that like they are more important to me than the things that you hold greatly. Like, like I am willing to have you and us killed for the sake of honoring my sister. Now that's noble, but I'm saying in the, in the, in the, in the pyramid of like respect, your father who has a, who has a, a real claim. He, he has a right to be frustrated. About yeah, exactly. like, you, 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 like you, you barely care, you know. So from that, from, f- and these are his oldest sons now. So from that point, I could, I could very well see Jacob trying to to reprimand them, and they don't care, or him not trying to at all. Like I could see, <laughs> I could see both. But at the end of the day, it's like we know what the what the what the result is. We know that whether discipline was involved or not, it wasn't effective. You know, because no. these, these guys, I mean, they just, they just do their own thing at the end of the day. <laughs> yeah. So now we see Israel made 
and this is the part of the story most people remember when they start thinking about the Joseph story. Like mm-hmm. the story she just picks up with Jacob giving Joseph a coat of many colors. And so we don't really know this coat look. The Bible just painted as a very ornate tunic coat. It's very lavish, one fitting for some place, some person of status. So now just think about it. You're the youngest child. Well, Benjamin was the youngest child, but you're the youngest child. You were the favorite child because Joseph's was Rachel's son. And Rachel was the favorite child of, I mean, Rachel was the favorite favorite wife wife, of, yeah. Yeah, wife of, of Jacob. <clears throat> so now Jacob is, what we even saw from last week's episode, Jacob was showing favoritism to Rachel and her children from, from time. <laughs> He, he, he sent the maid servants out in front with their children. Then he had Leah out in front with her children. And then he had Rachel and Joseph and Benjamin in the back. Mm-hmm. And so now imagine this, you have your, you have 10 older brothers, mm-hmm. right? And the father is showing you favoritism. Yeah. He didn't get a coat of many colors. Simeon didn't get a coat of many colors. Levi didn't get a coat of many colors. I'm not going to go through the whole list, but no one else got this ornate coat, but and, Jacob and the funny th- but Joseph got it. Yeah, Joseph. And the funny thing about it too, though, like his ten older brothers, they weren't like that much older than him, because the wives and the concubines could have children in the same year and stuff like that. We you know, like within a, uh, I want to say, uh, four, seven plus six, a thirteen year span. After the seven years that he already worked within a 13 year span, he could have been having all of these kids, mm-hmm. you know, and it's not like you having it by one woman. So it would be at least a year in between those. You could have two sons in the same. You could have four sons in the same year if you wanted to, you know, because you had four different like wives and concubines, mm-hmm. you know. So so these guys, they're not like. All right. So when I think about Joseph, I guess maybe the cartoons got me like this. I think that Joe, I, I used to think Joseph was like, like 12, right? And his mm-hmm. brothers were like all 30. I'm up, you mm-hmm. know, but reasonably his brother might, his oldest brother might not even be 10 years older than him. You know what I'm yeah. saying? And the Bible starts off saying like Joseph was 17 when this story starts. Right. So I mean, realistically, Reuben might've been in his mid twenties, I'd say right. probably mid twenties. I mean, because the only thing is like the Bible did show that, okay, Leah started off having children first mm-hmm. and then Rachel was still barren. And so Rachel gave her the maid servant. Can't remember which one right now. Right off top. Either Zilpah or Billa had children. Then Leah was barren. And then Leah gave Jacob the other maid servant. And then Leah had children again. And then Rachel had children. So, so watch this, right? So it's like, let's say, let's say he started having kids in year one of his marriage with, with the wives, right? Mm-hmm. By the time he left, Joseph was already born. Mm-hmm. So when he served the 20 years, so the 13 years of marriage, Joseph was already born. Mm-hmm. So theoretically, the oldest Reuben could have been was 13 years older than Jacob. And that's Reuben, the mm-hmm. oldest, you know? Mm-hmm. So. And I um, mean, and to me, it's probably even closer than that. Cause I mean, Jacob probably. It don't sound like he was one when they meet each other either. Like, it's not like right. he was at least decent age. Yeah, so. exactly. Right. So, yeah. So, yeah. So, he was like, yeah, it's not, it didn't sound like he was a newborn, essentially, yeah. you know? So, so, yeah. So, like, these, I feel like a lot of his brothers, at least three or four of them, were his pairs like a year, two years. Mm-hmm. They were all close know? in age. Yeah. So, so, with that being said, you're the you're the youngest of the teenage of the bunch, <laughs> right? But seriously though, if I'm 20 and my brother is 17, or if I'm 19 and my brother is 17, no. But seriously, not regardless of age, why are you doing this, bro? I never get a coat of many colors. You know what I'm saying? I used to work. I working for you in the field. <laughs> you know <laughs> what Joseph doing? <laughs> exactly. When I was his age. I never get none of that. You know. Exactly. So like. I mean, I just try to paint the picture for the audience too. So now we have this, this, this Joseph has already been showing immense favoritism and he's also a goody two shoe and he's also snitching on his brothers. Mm-hmm. But now the plot continues to thicken. So now we pick up in uh, verse five 
Joseph started having these dreams. So in this dream, he said he had a dream and he he told them, right? And he said, okay, so that they, we had like some binding sheaves of green out in the field. And suddenly my sheaf rose up and stood upright while all the other sheaves gathered around uh, and bowed down to it. His brothers was like, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. What, what, what you talking about? So now you're saying we gonna bow down to you? But, and but <laughs> what's interesting to me is like, remember in verse four, it says they hated him. Mm-hmm. and could not speak peaceably unto him. So, and I take this literally, mm-hmm. I hate you. And I don't have nothing good to say to you. Joseph, why are you sharing the stream with them, bro? Like, like I'm trying to wonder, I'm really wondering, are you that blind to, to, to the animosity towards you? Like, are you instigating, you know? Like, like you know, like when like, a child is so innocent and they're almost like oblivious mm-hmm. to what's really happening. That's what I'm getting from Joseph. That's, 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 that's like he really don't know what the, I'm getting from him. <laughs> he don't know the dangers he's putting himself in. <laughs> no, not at all. And so now he had, a, and, and you see, they, they even started to hate him even more after this, right? Mm-hmm. And then, so he had another dream, right? Mm-hmm. The thing, <laughs> and he's still listen. So now he say, oh, this time, the sun, the moon, and 11 stars were bowing down to me. And this mm. time, Jacob even had out. And Jacob was like, hold on, bro. Nah, what, you, you got what, what, what you talking about? You telling me Joseph. your mother and I can bow down to you? Yeah. It was our son. We ain't bowing down to you. Yeah. They say, Joseph, you got too much dip on your chips right now, bro. <laughs> but, but yo, but why? But why do they say your mother, though? Boy, I, I, you know, sometimes the Bible is jumped storyline. So she may have been alive still. Yeah. So this would mean that Benjamin wouldn't have been. But at the same you know, time, yeah, it, it, it was kind of weird because he still say 11 stars. Yeah. So I yeah, guess you just mean like your stepmother or something. Yeah. I mean, you know, Zilpha them and they was all still around. Yeah. Insert mother figure. Yeah. Cause, cause you know, you know, um, like let's say you have a stepmom and your mom passed and your stepmom raised you, you know, a lot of times people, refer to that as, as their mom, you know, like it. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So I guess that, that might've been why he said that. And Joseph seemed like the respect and type, you don't really, you know, he ain't going to yeah. disrespect nobody either way. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> okay. So now we see his brothers even got more jealous, right? But his father kept the matter in mind. So like his, Joseph still was thinking about it, but I think Joseph also, I mean, not, uh, Jacob think, thought about it, but he also like tried to keep the peace among everything. Mm-hmm. So it, it, Cause I still think the brothers, they still respect, Respected the father enough not to cause any trouble. Plus, you know, that's his favorite son. Mm-hmm. So it's like, you can't really touch the favorite. Like, no matter yeah. what, Joseph is going to be like, you know, get the better end of this, right? Mm-hmm. Okay, and it probably, so, done, it probably done been through that many times in life, though. Yeah. Like, <laughs> yeah, like, no matter who wrong, you wrong if you against Joseph type of situation. Oh. Uh-huh. So now uh-huh. we see, we know Jacob had a lot of, we know Jacob's wealth. He had a lot of flocks and herds and stuff. So, Naturally, you got a bunch of sons, so they're going to help you manage these. So we see in verse 12, the brothers were out, were out in the father's uh, fields with the, with the flocks near Shechem. But a pen in this, we know Shechem was the same line where uh, Simeon and Levi decimated. <laughs> decimated. And that's just to add more context, because we see now that Joseph, I mean, uh, uh, Jacob sent Joseph out there to check on his brothers. And mm-hmm. so you could go spend some time with them. Cause, and also like Joseph didn't hear, I mean, Jacob didn't hear back on in a while from the brothers. He was like kind of nervous. Like, oh, I know they're around Shechem. Mm-hmm. I know what they did in Shechem. Hopefully these other Canaanite kings didn't rise up against them. So he sent Joseph out to go find them. Yeah, go check on them boys. <laughs> but see, this is where Jacob should have had a better hold on his household. Like if he knew... The other sons don't really like Joseph like that. He shouldn't have sent Joseph by himself. Or he should have go sent a servant or something, in my opinion. But to me, this makes me feel like they're seeing an uncommon thing. Like Joseph would do stuff like this from time to time. It just so happens that this was a significant time and he did it. You know, I don't know why Jacob couldn't do it for himself. You know, probably was too old, maybe. Who old knows? Age. Yeah, you know, probably. You know, but, you know, parents get. At a certain yeah, point. Yeah, but then, and at the same time, though, 
this your brother though. You know what I'm saying? This your brother's though. Like so you should feel you should be able to feel comfortable to send, you know, your son to go see your other, other sons, sons like that. Like who would think, you know what I'm saying? Like who would be skeptical about like you could have reasonable skepticism by saying or oh, they probably might get into it, but at the end of the day, still farm, you know what I'm saying? They get into it all the time and they're still all in one piece. So I could see Jacob not even considering um the danger that Joseph may be in, in this situation. Uh-huh. And like now even the paint for the crowd. So now we're seeing that okay, Jacob sent Joseph down to the valley of Hebron, right? So from where if you look at a map of those times, right? Where where uh, Jacob settled and where the Valley of Hebron was, was like 50 miles away. Oh, wow. So Joseph sent Joseph, so Jacob sent Joseph on this like 50 mile journey to go check, go check on your siblings. Like this wasn't like, and that's the next thing you ask, like why Jacob didn't go himself. This mm. was kind of a, a trek. Like you, yeah, yeah. you're going on a little journey. Yeah, like, he might have to leave them. the household. He might have to deal. <laughs> I have to make sure stuff over here in, 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 in one piece, you know, so... Yeah, exactly. So like that was like 50 miles away. And then we see even when Joseph got there, a random person just found him wandering. <laughs> yeah. Like I could just picture him like this way it should be. Yeah. I don't see no cows. I don't see no sheep. And the, and the guy's like, bro, what, what you looking for? Mm-hmm. He's like, I'm looking for my, I can just imagine him just being so innocent. I'm looking, I'm for, looking my for my brothers. brothers. Yeah. <laughs> can you tell me where they're, where they're grazing the flocks? <laughs> and the guy's like, yeah, they moved from here. They, they, they went to Dothan. Mm-hmm. And so, Dothan, Dothan, from, from yeah. that place, from the Valley of Hebron to Dothan was another 15 miles. Yeah. So Joseph was, he was covering some He's on a mission. Yeah. <laughs> to, to find his brothers, right? Do all that in one day? You think he'd do all that in one day? I don't know. 15 I miles? Know. I, would, I, I would assume he have a that's, camel or a horse. That's like 70 miles. Yeah, who knows? Bro, who knows? You can do that. You can do that now. Now, you feel me? <laughs> Real. Yeah. yeah. And so now we see he finally found them, right? And so his brothers, when they saw him, instead, I think about it. You, you had this long journey. You excited mm-hmm. to meet your brothers finally because you like, I'm good. I'm finally mm-hmm. found y'all. It's all good. We could chill. We could catch up. I've been seeing y'all in a while. So I can imagine Joseph's naive's mind. He's pretty happy. I finally found y'all. His brothers, mm-hmm. when they saw him, before he even reached, they plotted to kill him. Hmm. So think about that. See him. You see him come in and you're like, this our chance to kill him. Mm-mm. And just seeing him, this is because I assume he probably came with his coat too. So as soon as they saw that mm-hmm. coat. Yeah, he came with the coat. He came with the coat. As soon as they saw that coat, they were like, no, bro, you ain't come out here with this. You ain't come out here with this. <laughs> ain't no one could hear you scream out here, bro. And you see, and, and like, you see like how they was just like starting to like chastise him. Here comes that dreamer. They said to each other, come mm-hmm. now, let's kill him and throw him into one of these cisterns, well, these pits. And so a ferocious animal, so that a ferocious animal could devour him. And then we'll see what comes of his dreams. So we can see they were and, still salty about the dreams. And this ain't no joke, bro. This ain't no, they, they're not, they're not playing. You know what I'm saying? This is they dead serious. Let's they just remember Simeon and Levi is in this bunch. <laughs> yes. Even if, <laughs> even if, so if you ever the, hey, go for it. Yeah, if you yeah, if you ever second guess or doubt it, <laughs> the the seriousness of this matter, just remember these guys have done that for less. You know what yeah, I'm saying? My saying? thing well, is like even, less, but, yeah. even if you think you're gonna be the one to speak up against Simeon and Levi. Hmm. I wouldn't do it. You won't be on the wrong side of history on this one, buddy. <laughs> no. It's, yeah, you see, you see how they them them boys get busy. And if this was before then, oh, uh, so if the, the thing happened, um, their episode happened before this, so they could have been teenagers, they could have been 20, 21 when it happened. You know what I'm saying? These in these young boys were hot heads type of situation, you know? Yeah, they were like. Pretty much definitely teenagers when they ramsack check him. <laughs> and that's like, I know they hated Joseph, but I feel like, I feel like because they just had respect for their father, I feel like this was hate that they had for their father. 
to a large degree that was given to Joseph. You know what I'm saying? Mm. Of course, Joseph played his own role. <laughs> We've seen that, you know? But, mm -hmm. you know when they say don't kill the messenger type of situation? Mm -hmm. I mean, That's he really Joseph. was a messenger in this case right now. You know what I mean? So, right now, like, he get all the smoke. Literally. That it wasn't it. It was <laughs> it wasn't even his idea for this. But it's funny though. Imagine this, right? You want a long trot. I go see my brothers, regardless if you like them or not. We don't know how Joseph felt. I'm sure he didn't hate them though. And after a long journey, you might be hungry. You might be tired, bro. This 70 miles. You see in your brothers, you like, man, whew, finally. But you ain't even met with no, no type of hospitality. You met no. with violence, bro. They chose violence when they saw you. You know what I mean? And they verbalizing this. Maybe we should kill you. And they telling you this by your margin. Imagine your bros, dog. They tell you, but we should kill you, dog. I should kill you, throw you in this pit, and let the wild animals eat you. What? And they mean that. <laughs> they mean that that's a serious threat. And these from people who have bodies, bro. Bodies, <laughs> plural. It would be nothing to them to do this to you. So you know this ain't no joke. You know, so mm. like I could just imagine the fear that Joseph was experiencing right now, bro. And I actually like, it actually making me kind of like, I know, like, like I would say frustrated, but it, like it just making me kind of anxious thinking mm -hmm. about that. Like, because right now, like I, what I like to do in all of these stories, bro, like I like to look at this because this is real life. I don't look at this as like it's fiction. So like just like when I read about stories of, of like um, slavery and injustices to people in the world, like how I get frustrated, like that's what I, that's what I think. And now, nah, the guy, 17 year old young boy, just just following, following his, their father's orders. And now he met with this violence towards him. Mm -hmm. And now we see Reuben again, the oldest son. We know Reuben somehow was being missing from action. Reuben Hans, don't, be, don't get dirty in these type of things, bro. Ruben, no. Like, Ruben, like, like, I'm a lover, not a fighter. <laughs> literally. <laughs> literally. So Reuben tried to come up with this plot, right? Uh, Reuben said, okay, let's not... Ruben say, let's just put him in the pit for now, and, um, I, but, don't, but don't lay a hand on him. And so Ruben plot was to say, you know what? We're going to put him in this hole, and we're going to take him. I, I'm, and like Ruben say, I mean, Ruben's fine. He's going to come back later and release him and take him back to the father. Because I honestly think, too, Ruben was the oldest one, right? So, you know, when, you, like, when, you, when, when, you're, a little bit, when you're a little bit more mature, so now you, he know that this, this, this daddy's favorite son, it don't make no sense killing him. Because I know what this is, I know the repercussions that's gonna come from this. Daddy is gonna be very, very sad and in anguish and in sorrow. And, and just imagine the impact that that's going to do to their family. Mm -hmm. You know? So no matter what, a death in the family, or even when your pet passes away, that's like that's like not a it's not a copy day. Like, you know, like you're gonna miss that. Like when people pass away, they it's like they take memories with them. Like it's a piece of you that feels like it's missing, type of situation. You have sisters. You have brothers. Well, you have a sister. We don't know if you have sisters, plural. But you, you probably have, um, you know, just a lot of just a lot of people in your community. No, mm -hmm. but of course the brothers ain't gonna miss him. But <laughs> you have people in your community who is gonna be impacted by you. We, we see when we see when when the nurse when um Rebecca's nurse passed away, how mm -hmm. much weeping it was. So just imagine it's like this: your farm, like this, your real, this your blood relative passed away. And so Reuben, take all of these things into consideration. Now the Bible don't say what Reuben, um, what Reuben intends. This was why he said that. But we know for a fact that he was furious when he find out what the result is. And, and you know, that really leads me to believe that Reuben had no intentions of really hurting him. Like they say Reuben heard them say this, which means Reuben wasn't in the conversation while they were saying this. So Reuben wasn't even a part of these plans. And mm -hmm. Reuben was the voice of reason. Let's not do this. And then when Reuben didn't want him killed, and so they, you know, they didn't kill him. And Reuben is frustrated. Why? Because Reuben didn't even want nothing to happen to Joseph. Mm -hmm. You know, but his brothers wasn't on that type of time. They, <laughs> they wasn't seeing the eye. They didn't have the same thing in mind um, in, in this regard. And we'll, and we'll get to that. Yeah. Like, right so, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> hmm. 
<laughs> so now we see like Joseph finally came and they say, okay, cool. We're going to ship him. They ship off of his robe. They tore it up. And then uh, they threw him into the hole, the pit. It was empty. And there was no water in it. So he didn't have to like drown or suffer. So he, just, he was just in a deep pit. And so they did all of this. And then after that, they sat down and ate. Like, just think about this now. You just, you essentially beat up your brother, your little brother, and threw him in a pit. And now y'all just going to sing Kumbaya and eat some bread. Mm. Like, and you charming him, bro. Well, That's I don't why, think you this can guy's probably hungry. <laughs> but yeah. yeah. But you can, you can help. You can help people <laughs> eating. <laughs> eating and laughing. Yeah. You're having a good time. Man, oh man. And so now at that point, round, they, they're eating and they look up and they saw some Ishmaelites. So they look up and they saw their cousins. Hmm. They're like second and third cousins. And they were going on a caravan to Egypt. So they had some uh, spices, some myrrh and some balm. And so they were, going, they were going to Egypt. And so Judah, now Judah got to get his moment to shine. He said, okay, hold on. What will we gain if we actually kill Joseph and cover this up? Let's just sell him. Hmm. That way... Our blood, his blood ain't on our hands. After all, he is our brother and our own flesh and blood. Hmm. So now we see, we see Reuben wanted to save Joseph. Hmm. So Reuben was saying, okay, let's, let's uh, put him in the pit. Just leave him there. And Reuben's plan was to come back later and save him. Mm-hmm. Now the other brothers, they sat down and ate. Judah got up and said, you know what? Let's not kill him. This is our brother. Let's just sell him. That way we could get rid of him, but he, his blood ain't on our hearts. If they, if they kill him in Egypt, the Ishmaelites kill him, that on them. That ain't on us, but we're still getting rid of him. And so now all the other, so the other brothers who were present, they agreed. What you were saying? That's still sick though. That's sick, bro. No, it's, it's, it's very messed up. Bro, and, and, and like to me, it's like, what is family, bro? Ishmael is your grand uncle. You know what I mean? You got sold to the, the clan of your grand uncle. You know, you're literally your cousins. Like mm-hmm. this would be like your second and third cousins because it's, it's only a few generations since, you mm-hmm. know? And yeah, they buy you normal. They buy you like it's nothing. Yeah, yeah, this is a slave. But this this your blood relatives too, you know? And bro, all this whole story is wild, bro. Judah. And I just wanna I just wanna point out who said this. This was Judah idea. You know, and that's why when I was going through the list, I was like, all right, we already know what these guys did already, you know, mm-hmm. but now it's Judah time. Judah's decided to sell his brother. Like to Judah, this was like the, 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 the happy medium. Oh, I, mm-hmm. I giving him a break. I ain't, we ain't killing him. We just could sell him, you know, to conceal his blood. I like, bro. And now we know, we know the, the significance of Judah. We know Kings come from the line of Judah. You know, Jesus come from the line of Judah, but my whole thing is to like not ever be a respecter of persons. You know, in certain denominations, people pray to Mary. You know, they pray to a lot of people in the Bible, but these just people at the end of the day. As a matter of fact, like you see a time, it was a time when someone come to Jesus and like, your mommy, your mommy won't want, want, want see you. He's like, who's my mommy? You know what I mean? Oh. Like, it's like, but like, like Jesus is really saying, and I paraphrase and I doing the will of God, bro. So everybody who doing the will of God and following the will of God, that's my mommy. That's my brother. That's my sister type of situation. You know, like, you know, you know, favoritism. So here we have um, Judah, who is, who Jesus comes from his line. And it's like, you know, in certain cultures, people regard him as like a significant person because, you know, the lion comes from this tribe or whatever. There's still a human being at the end of the day. And I, and I'm not saying that I'm advocating doing wrong, but at the same time, we've seen how, there are people who played significant roles in the Bible who are not perfect, who have acted out of hatred and who have, you know, done bad things, you know, but at the same time, that don't, that don't, like we say all the time, we can't go, we can't, we can't out God's love type of situation. Mm-hmm. So we have a situation where this person played a significant role in not doing the will of God. And I'm sure he repented. I'm sure, you know, he got things right with God, but at the end of the day, God was still able to use Judah. Period. And the rest of these, the rest of the tribe, you know, because yep. it, it was all the brothers involved except Benjamin. You know. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So, like, they sold Joseph for twenty pieces of silver, so twenty shekels of silver. Um, 
and they took him to eat and the, and the Ishmaelites took him to Egypt. But so now when Reuben came back, Reuben was like, hold on. Josephine in the hole. He tore his clothes and he was like, so what could I do now? So now let me so imagine Reuben. He had his master plan saying, okay, I'm going to come back, free Joseph, send him back home. Yeah. You go, don't come back. His brothers, the, rest, the other brothers was like, Joseph in that hole, we ain't going to kill him. Let's sell him. So now we can see, even though Reuben told them to not kill him, they still probably have plans to, to kill him. Mm-hmm. And so they say, you know what? We ain't going to kill him. Let's sell him. Reuben comes back to try and act his plan. Joseph's gone. So he's like, what? I thought we agreed to just leave him in the pit. Yeah. See, but this is the thing. This is the thing. Reuben was making it seem like, don't shed his blood. But we can kill him by throwing him in the pit and he's going to die that way. Right? But if that was truly his intention, why would you be mad if they sell him? Like, no, why would you that, wasn't his, that wasn't his intention because... I yeah, know, I know, and I, and that's the point I'm trying to, to 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 drive. You know what I'm saying? Like we could see how Ruben, he was lying, bro. Like he was he was faking, like he was down for this plan. You know what I mean? And when it actually come into fruition in a different way, it's actually a better alternative than leaving your brother in a pit. You know, because at least he doesn't die this way. And mm-hmm. now he's furious, like he tears clothes, like what? You know what I'm saying? Like 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 his plan just fell apart, and it's so crazy because. Like, if you read Patriots and Prophets, the way Ellen White paints it is that Reuben, he felt so emotional during this time that he could not stay in the presence of his brothers mm-hmm. without blowing his cover. So he had to leave to console himself, like to, to compose himself, you know? So to his dismay, when he came back, the plan was already done, mm-hmm. you know? So I know, I know that tear him apart. If anybody, RuPaul, um, Levi and Simeon, they probably didn't kill. Judah no. probably didn't kill. But I know Reuben, not tear him apart. And so now it was like at that point, Reuben had to jump in into the plot and cover up Joseph's absence. Mm-hmm. Because now they all have to come up with a story as to why Joseph ain't coming back with them. Which I'm still interested to, like, it's still interesting to see that they still went to this extent because I mean, yet they used this lie that, okay, Joseph died. Right. Mm-hmm. But why they just didn't say he never made it to us. Yeah. That's what I was thinking. I was like, Oh, where's Joseph? Who, wait, what? what? You sent him? I thought we left him with you. You know, like they could have do that normal. And I feel yeah. like that's what they wanted to do. That's, that was the plan. But I feel like, I feel like maybe Ruben was saying just so, so, Cause he probably it probably would have hurt Reuben more to see his daddy being hopeful that Joseph will return. Or maybe they would go out like no lie, Jacob would probably send out a search party for him though. That's what I was and, that's what I was just and, thinking. And then you're probably gonna run into people in Shechem because they know who these people are, mm-hmm. you know, and they're gonna say, uh, yeah, we sent them to Dothan, and that's where they were. Oh, mm-hmm. we seen these. It's, it's too much. I feel like it's too much of a paper trail. So they probably was just saying that, um, because ain't no one could tie, you know, one could tie Joseph coming to them, you know, one yeah. could tie that piece together, but they could, they could find, they could, they could tie Joseph leaving Shechem to go to Dothan, you mm-hmm. know. But in that, so they, they just like, man, I'm gonna just, I'm gonna just, um, we could just make up the story so it ain't no, but we daddy just, ain't gonna go and he ain't gonna go and try to like fuck check, him, you know. Yeah, so it just could put a nail in this coffin one time. And so now you see they kill a goat, dips Joseph's ripped up robe in the blood, and then they took the robe back to back to Jacob. And he and they literally said, We found this. Examine it to see if it's your if it's your son's robe. If it's Joseph's robe, right? <laughs> and yeah. like instantly, I just imagine Jacob instantly, like, oh yeah, this is my son's robe. Mm. Some ferocious animal has devoured him. Mm. Joseph has surely been torn to pieces. Mm. And we see how Jacob just sunk into this abysmal despair. Jacob, he ripped his I clothes. Feel so- I feel to- sorry for Jacob. But this man been through a lot. A and lot, see- bro. And the Bible will say all his sons and all of his daughters came to comfort him, but he refused to be comforted. Mm. No, he said, I will continue to mourn until I join my son in the grave. So his father wept for him. Like, just think about 
how much that had to hurt him. Because hmm. no lie, why wouldn't it hurt you if you know you send your son out and he get killed? That on your that on your hands, really. Like, like in your mind, I cause him get killed. You know, like some people believe whatever's going to happen is going to happen regardless. But I'm sure he felt guilty in mm-hmm. doing so. Or if I didn't, if I didn't do that, because, you know, Benjamin, the son of my side, he, but Benjamin never leave his side now. You understand what I said? We so got unpacked that like, in like three episodes, but yeah. Right. So, so I feel like he might have been saying, I should have never let. Because I care about Joseph so much and I know I care about him and I ain't hiding that I care about him, I should have been more protective of Joseph. Granted, mm-hmm. he's very protective of him, but he probably stand is more I could do. And you know, whenever stuff go wrong, bro, you always thinking about what I could have done better, bro. And this is sad, bro, because remember, bro, you and I, we have a friend, we have a mutual friend who passed away and we see how his family, how, how, how that affected his family, his parents, bro. We saw how, how that happened, bro. You know what I'm saying? And like, like I've lost people and it's like, sometimes their mother, their father, like it really tear them apart. Like, you know, I, I, I hope to never feel that, you know, and this is, and this is, this is, I feel like this is even more like out of all the stuff, Simeon and Levi and the boys done did. I feel like this the most heinous for in our emotional level because like it's one thing to kill strangers and you are, and you have a motive, you know, but you mm-hmm. hurting your dad, you hurting your father to the point where you trying to console him because you know you don't like this feeling, you know that's a sad feeling, you know, but it's like to continue this to it's like I feel like I feel like you know it, it'll take a big man. It'll take a really big man to, to come back and say, yeah, we lie. We do X, Y, Z. Because then they might take him and try to kill them or, 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 you know what I mean? Something, something of that nature. Like, it's, it's repercussions for that. But to go along with this arc for years and years and years, like, that's heavy. That's a lot. Mm-hmm. Like, poor, poor Jacob, man. Like, your daughters. But imagine, imagine Benjamin trying to mm-hmm. console him. Benjamin, you have nothing to do with nothing. No, son. Uh uh-uh. no, no. I am mourning. You know what I'm saying? That's that's just crazy. That's just crazy. Like, like imagine your biggest fail in life, bro, ever happening. You know the thing that you fear the most happened unexpectedly, and you feel like it is your fault that this has happened. Like, yeah, I man, feel like man. out of all the sh- all the stress labor put him through, ain't nothing. I feel like ain't nothing he even gone through before this. Take the cake. Like to this, like I feel like, honestly, I feel like the death of Jacob of Joseph. I'm sorry, was was deeper to him than the death of Rachel because it came after the fire. You know, I already take this big bro anger. I already take this big blow. I don't got nothing left, mm-hmm. and now you take even more from me. So, yeah, yeah. I think it's like all the other, all the other acts that happened to him weren't really acts of sorrow. You know what I'm saying? Like they were more like. When 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 Simeon Levi ran into Shechem, that was more of an annoyance and ang- and anxious, <laughs> like more fair, like bro, why y'all do that? You know what I'm saying? Like, I ain't sad. I'm just more yeah. annoyed that y'all putting me in this predicament now. Because now these people are gonna be looking at me funny. You know mm-hmm. what I'm saying? That was more of that. But with with Esau, it was more of like a fair. Like I don't know if Esau is gonna accept me as my offering. If Esau is gonna try to kill me. Mm-hmm. Laban was anger. Why you she treating me so poorly these all these years and now expect me to just be happy with it? But this one was just genuine sorrow. Hmm. Like this was just genuine sorrow. Like it wasn't like these were tears of pure sorrow. Like this man literally went into mourning. He went into a deep depression. He lost his favorite son. And we could see this is his favorite son because he treated him better than all the other sons. He lit- this man literally gave him like a royal coat to wear. Like this is his favorite son from his favorite wife. Hmm. So he, like you said, he already lost Rachel. And so now it's like you're, lo- you're losing one of the precious ornaments of Rachel. And so now you're, like, you just can imagine him. Like, this was like just deep sorrow. Because I mean, this, it, wasn't no, it wasn't no other emotion. This was just pure sadness and pain. Mm. Like you did all this for Joseph. And like you say, you probably put, putting yourself in this pain predicament too. Like, oh, if I didn't send him by himself, this wouldn't happen. If I had trained him a little bit better, this wouldn't happen. If I actually let him go in the fields with his brothers, this wouldn't happen. 
if I had actually paid more yeah, attention he, with anything, this probably wouldn't have happened. So he put, he, he like, he just embodying everything he could have done better now, but it's like too late. Joseph's gone. That, yeah, bro, that's, I don't know, that's just sad. <laughs> like, that's just, poor Jacob, poor, poor Israel. Poor Israel, and then we I see, we'll oh, go for it. No, yeah, I was going to say the same thing you said. And now we see chapter 37 just ends with uh, a line. Meanwhile, the Midianites, I guess this was another, yeah, the Midianites sold Joseph in Egypt to Potiphar, one of Pharaoh's officials, the captain of the guard, right? And so now you would think, you would think this, this, this begins the Joseph arc in, in Egypt, which it kind of does. When you go to Genesis 38, we get a nice little, another juicy story. Yeah, <laughs> boy, oh boy, this is the continuation of our good, our good brethren, Shooter. Uh huh. <laughs> so yeah, Genesis thirty-eight. The Bible, like we say, it goes on a little commercial break. Give you another story that you didn't know you needed. <laughs> story and a story. Exactly. So now we we get to unpack Judah. A little bit. Judah and Tamar is what the little heading says in my Bible. So we see Judah left his brothers after this whole ordeal. So I, in my head, Ken, I'm thinking this is after Joseph got sold into sold to Egypt. Mm-hmm. Because that's just how 37 ended. And in 39, we're going to be back with Joseph in, 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 in Egypt. So now we see after this, Judah left his brothers. I think he just said, you know what? I need some time away. Because <laughs> I mean, we did see he was the one who also said, like we just said, hey, Let's not put his blood on our hands, right? But you know, sometimes just to deal with everything that just happened, even emotionally, your father in mourning, you know what you did. So, I mean, you still have this guilt on your conscience, but you, but you can't reveal, you know, that kind of way. So mm-hmm. I'm thinking Judah just say, you know what? I need a break from all this. Let me Get just, dis- let me distance myself a little bit, take some time to myself and you know, process, process some things that, 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 that everything just happened. So we see he, he, left, he left to stay in, uh, with a man of Adulam in Hera. <laughs> these, these memes, man. Boy, oh, boy. And so we see Judah met a daughter of a Canaanite man named Sua. So we see, and, and he, he married her and made love to her. And she became pregnant and gave birth to a son and whose name was Er, literally E-R. And she conceived again and gave birth to a son and named him Onan. And she gave birth still to another son and named him <laughs> Sheila. Mm-hmm. So now we see Judah was in the land of Canaan. And he married a Canaanite. And he gave birth to three children from a Canaanite lady. Yep. Here's the right point that I was because we see, we know, like, you know, we wanted Wait. them to marry non Canaanites. Exactly. But it's like now they're surrounded by Canaanites again. <laughs> and they might not be saying, they might say, man, we can't go back to Laban them. Nope. <laughs> Don't tell it. But then think about it. He take Laban daughters. Yeah. Now, <laughs> so like they might, I don't know what, what, what um, Rebecca and family tree was looking like, but they might not have no more <laughs> family over there who they could even, you know, go to. But they probably did though because Laban had sons and X, Y, Z. So Yeah. Mm. Who knows? Know. And so Judah, so this story gets interesting. So Judah got a wife for his first son, heir, and her name was Tamar. But Judah's firstborn was wicked in the Lord's sight. Mm-hmm. And so the Lord put him to death. See, this is my thing though. See, why mm-hmm. Simeon and Levi kill a whole town. <laughs> what he did, bro, <laughs> what Reuben's son did. To, for the Lord to be so displeased with him that he's killing him, bro. Like, that's crazy. Bro, oh, I don't, I, I only can speculate <laughs> that it probably was something to like worshiping other gods and other kind of stuff like that. I, I, I don't know. Yeah. I don't know. The Bible doesn't go into detail. So anything I say would be speculation and I don't want to lead anyone else astray. But mm-hmm. like you say, just something to think about. What yep. did Air do? <laughs> that was so displeasing to God. And think about it, man. Like your, your grandfather is still Jacob. <laughs> your great granddaddy is still Isaac. Your great great granddaddy is is Abraham. 
Abraham, like, yeah. You know these stories, <laughs> man. Like, but I, but then like we say, I don't know how much, but we know Jacob did tell his sons the, the issue, like mean like some of his dreams, his visions, the promises God has given him. But it's like, mm-hmm. it, it, but we see his sons were, they were just morally corrupt. Uh, uh, well, there's no better way to say time, that. <laughs> but you don't see where Jacob's saying. Now we don't know what his plan for Joseph was. It mm-hmm. possibly was Joseph, but we don't see where Jacob's saying. All right, you got the birthright, and you can continue the legacy X, Y, and Z. It's just like he just winging it. Really, Jacob might be thinking like, "Oh, I don't mean you so much stress with this birthright situation, bro. I just could avoid this entirely." You know what I mean? Because mm-hmm. because we don't see where he even where he even have uh, outside of J- Joseph. It could have been Joseph, but other than that. But Joseph ain't even the oldest, bro. Joseph is like son number 11, you know. Mm-hmm. But we don't see where he was saying, like, all right, you could be the priest of the household following me or you can inherit this type of situation. We don't see where, where jo- Jacob even taking that, that, that task on. Yeah, because they don't really even get their blessings until Jacob dies. And that's, we're, we're, we're several chapters away from that. Mul- many chapters away from that. Yeah. Jacob so might have been really full of life right now, though. I guess. Huh? He have been full of life right now. Wait, this Jacob really had a lot of stories to tell. Yeah. <laughs> Whenever I get to heaven, well, I want to, I want to, I want to have a conversation with Jacob. <laughs> yeah. Sorry, you have to go through all of that buckle. <laughs> <laughs> I read a lot about you, buddy. Yeah, yeah. I read a lot about... <laughs> Made for some good content, though. <laughs> <laughs> oh my! But yeah, that's, I mean, going back to like the part, that's really like. Interesting. Like, what did Aaron do? The Bible doesn't say, but what did he do? And then we see, okay, so Judah said to Onan, sleep with your brother's wife and fulfill your duty to her as the brother-in-law to raise up her offspring for your brother. Okay, so this line right here, right? So back in those, in that custom, it's called like a pervite marriage or something like that. But it was a custom for if your brother, if your brother dies, if your older brother dies or your brother dies, right? And your brother did not have a child with this widow. The brother is supposed to marry the widow and produce a child. And the purpose of child too was to also take care of the, of the widow. Because back in those days, if you were a widow and you had no children, you were kind of like destitute to, to society. You, it sounds yeah, you, bad. You but yeah, it's messed up. I don't know. I don't even know how they get to that conclusion. But it's like women value was associated to men. Mm-hmm. Yeah, time. And I'm sure I, I, I'm, I'm not sure of this, but it it is a it's, they, I think it's a lot like that still now. Like, I don't know the relation of like father, mother or wife, husband, but I have a friend from that area and he tells me stuff along that along that line. You know what I'm saying? Like, uh, like along the lines of how women like the culture of women in, in that type in, in, in the Middle East. Yeah. Know? It, we just know like their rights are a little bit more restrictive to this day. Like some of the Middle Eastern countries are working on it. I know like Saudi Arabia just gave the women rights to vote within the last decade. Yeah, so, my, I, I, I remember my friend was telling me like women could legally drive now. Mm-hmm. And I was just like, I was just like, <laughs> what? <laughs> what are you talking about, man? Like, but any yes. back to the- yeah. <laughs> yeah. So now you see like, okay, so it was like their legal duty. And it, so it was a legal duty to marry the widow, have, ch- have, have children with the widow. So the, so the widow could actually have some, I hate to use the word value, but the, the widow would have more value to society now. And, yeah, the, like and, the sons, and the sons would also be able to take care of the, uh, take care of the woman. Yeah. But the thing is, caveat is that due to these customs, the child you have with the widow would technically not be your child. It would be your, 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 dead brother's brother's child even though it's your seed but this is like a legal custom of the time and it was like you know a thing you were supposed to do Mm -hmm. so now we see that's why was like yeah own it go fulfill your duty you gotta do this Hmm. do it right now Onan went in and he was like oh yeah i have no problem sleeping with tamar not at all but he did not want to have the child with Tamar. Hmm. So we see he went in there and you see the Bible says in verse nine, but Onan knew the child would not be his. So whenever he slept with his brother's wife, he spilled the semen on the ground to keep providing, 
to keep from providing offspring for his brother. What he mm-hmm. did was wicked in the Lord's sight and the Lord put him to death also. So <laughs> people, so like people who don't know the customs, they, they're just saying, oh, God was mad at him spilling the semen. Like God was mad at him. God wasn't really- Spilling the seed. Yeah, yeah, spilling the seed, right? But you gotta look at the customs. So now essentially, because we see like the Bible shows, he, he was doing this multiple times. Whenever he slept with Tamar, he wouldn't, you know, ejaculate inside of Tamar just to yeah. keep it 100. You know what I'm saying? So yeah. now we see God was saying, hold on. So you're just using this as a pleasure thing. So you're, yeah, you're supposed to have sex with Tamar because, I mean, currently this is like your quote unquote wife, but you're not, you're not fulfilling the full duties of the custom and the law. Mm-hmm. So you're just essentially using Tamar as a prostitute. Yeah. Molesting. You're playing, you're playing yeah. right now. Bro. That's a serious vibe. You know, this you're playing. is you're playing around too much. And so you see the Lord, the Lord put him to death. And, no, and the people usually try to use this as something against masturbation. There's literally a term called onanisms when for people who masturbate, but it's not really talking about <laughs> masturbation. <laughs> <laughs> That's crazy. It's not talking it's, about like ejaculating. It's talking about like, it's, it, you got to look at the full custom of the day and like, what was the real issue going on in this case? Yeah, nothing, nothing in this text implies that he masturbated. You know what I'm saying? He wasn't masturbating. This man was literally if any, having sex. If, if anything, onanism should be like what you call like what what people say the pull out method is. You know what I mean? That should be called onanism. If anything, because that's that's what he doing. You know what I mean? Like he ain't staying in to fertilize. You know? No, he was there for all of the fun and none of the actual duties. Exactly. Yeah. So the God was like, no. So now we see Judah said to his daughter in law Tamar, "You know what? Live." as a widow in my household until the younger son, Sheila, grows up. For he thought that Sheila would die also if he was to go with Tamar. Well, well, hold on. It was saying, live as a widow at her father's household. In your father's household and tell my yeah. son. Oh, yeah, yeah. Yeah, I got you. Grows up. So for he thought that, that, that Sheila would die too, just like his brothers. So Tamar went and lived, <laughs> lived in her father's household. Right. So now even going back to the custom. So the custom, the custom is, and the law is, Sheila, since heir did not have a son with, with, with Tamar mm-hmm. and died before he could fill the prophets, that, 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 that. Onan. Yeah, then Onan had a son. Mm-hmm. I mean, then, then, I mean, then Onan moved up. Onan died before he had a son. So now by law, Sheila was supposed to fulfill that, that, f- f- fulfill the gift of Tamar's son. Mm-hmm. But Judah now was like, okay, let's just wait until Sheila grows up. So, you know, I'll send him to you at that point. Mm-hmm. <laughs> but we see Judah had other plans. <laughs> so we see a long time Judah's wife, the daughter of Shua died. And when Judah had recovered from his grief, he went up to Timnah, to the man who was, share- who was sharing his sheep. And his friend, you want to say that? Here are the Adilamite. <laughs> Went with him. So now Tamar was told, your father-in-law is on the way to Timna to share his sheep. So she took off her widow's clothes. So yeah, widows had a specific garment that they wore to like distinguish themselves as widows. Mm-hmm. Customs of the day. It's like, we can't really understand that in our present culture, but that was the custom of the day. Widows had clothes that they wore to disguise, I mean, to like designate them as widows. So now she covered herself with a veil and disguised herself further. And she sat down at the entrance to the city, which was on the road to Timnah. For she, for she saw that though Sila had, had, had now grown up, she had not been given to him as a wife. So now, so now to paint that story, like to make the story come full circle, we know that Sheila was supposed to be Timnah's next husband. Mm-hmm. Because the custom was she could not marry anybody else because Onan and Ur still had another brother. So according to the law, the next brother was supposed to be husband. So she could not marry anybody else. And mm. she knew that. And Judah also knew that. But Judah did not want to give Tamar, well, Sheila. It's kind of weird saying Sheila. But she didn't want to give Sheila to Tamar because he feared that I'm going to lose my only son mm-hmm. at this point. Two of my sons and being with you, well, two of my sons met their end. Why mm. am I giving you my last son? So yeah, Judah was saying, forget the law. You ain't getting my son. Hmm. 
And Tamar was like, you still have me in my father's household as a widow when your son already grown up. Hmm. So I just try to paint the picture for the audience as to what's going on. Because I know this text would be a little kind of weird. It's like, what's happening? What's happening? But that's kind of was that, that's kind of the scene. That's kind of like the scene. The stage is being set as to why they're going through this now. Hmm. Yeah, but she had game though. She was smart. She was. Yeah, she ain't going out without a fight. <laughs> Boy, okay. and the plot thickens some more. Oh, oh, yeah. oh yeah. So now we see when Judah saw, he thought she was a prostitute. Mm mm mm. For she had covered her face. So now, again, mm. I really want to know <laughs> what these veils they wore back in those days, how protective they were. Because we see Jacob, Israel Jacob, did not know that was Leah mm-hmm. until after he had sex with her. Mm. Right? Mm-hmm. Now, we see in Judah... Like we say before, the apple don't fall far from the tree. <laughs> we see Judah, who is Jacob's son, in a similar predicament mm-hmm. now. So we see Judah yeah. thought she was a prostitute because she was covered up. Because we know she put on a veil. Not realizing that it was his daughter-in-law, he went over to her by the roadside and said, come with me now, let me sleep with you. Mm-mm-mm. I don't know if to appreciate naughty, how naughty, forward naughty, he was. Or he was a naughty like, boy or... <laughs> Judah was a naughty boy, bro. <laughs> eh? Watch this, right? Yeah. We see why David and Solomon liked women so much. Boy, it was in their blood. <laughs> that was in their DNA, bro. bro wow. I never put that together. Bro. <laughs> no, but that's crazy. Judah, Judah going there for sheep, right? What are you going there for? What are you in this town for? <laughs> He Why went, you here, bro? He went there to go spend some time with his friend since his wife died. But I mm-hmm. guess since his wife died, he was feeling a bit lonely. Yeah. He and saw what the... some would call a woman of the night. Yes. And he and said, he you know what? He patronized her business. <laughs> <laughs> he supports entrepreneurs. <laughs> you know? <laughs> I ain't touching that with a 10-foot pole. <laughs> Judah's a naughty boy. That's a that's all I said, bro. See, my thing is, if you don't read, if you don't read and you ain't paying attention, you'll miss this. this you'll miss this about Judah, bro. Because, bro, we don't know nothing else about Judah. We don't know. We don't have no other stories about Judah, bro. Besides the, these two. The thing about it is, I'm like, bro, Genesis. I don't know. I don't know if it's yeah. covered anymore. Yeah. But it's like when people, like when we get to this part in the Bible, people so focus on Joseph. People don't talk about Genesis. Like this yeah. is 38. They don't talk about just 38. Yeah. It's like, okay, no, we just get into Joseph. Forget Judah. No one cares about Judah. <laughs> this is such a because Joseph's story is so juicy. This is such a but this is a juicy story in itself. This is such like a movie yeah. script. Like, how could mm. I mean it's all of the plot's still thickening some more? We ain't we ain't even get to it yet. Like, no, we ain't <laughs> get to it yet. <laughs> we ain't even get to it yet. And so we see Tamar get getting her back. She's like, hold on. So what will you give me to sleep with you? What type of business you doing? What type? What type? What do you think this is? <laughs> it's a transaction, right? buddy. It's a transaction. I don't know. She's a neighbor. She's in the same for free. Right. Right. Keeping in mind, this is his daughter-in-law, ladies and gentlemen. This is his yeah, daughter-in-law. He don't even know. He don't even know. He don't and even he say, recognize no. the voice. And guess what? We need to be getting that because his daddy didn't recognize Leah's voice either. That's what? true. That's true. <laughs> he said, "You know what? I'll send you. I'll, I'll send you a young goat from my flock." Hmm. And she said, "Hold on." So think about it. She's like, your flock ain't with you right now. Yeah, that sounds like so, a, that sound like you're trying to swindle. Exactly. So what you what you giving me as a pledge until you send it? Hmm. This way she was using her head. Mm-hmm. But she was using it. He said, he said, oh, like, she playing oh, chess. She's playing chess. She playing this chess. Playing tic tac toe, bro. But he, but he no, playing. She's he, playing chess. I don't even know what he playing, but he just playing. But I want. <laughs> he's <laughs> he playing horny boy right now. So <laughs> Real talk. He's just trying to bro. sign a contract, bro. And she was like, mm-hmm. what pledge should I give you? And she and the, this this where she smashed. She say, your seal and its cord and the staff in your heart. So now, ladies Lord. and gentlemen, I just want to paint this, paint this, paint, paint this picture. She said, guess what? The items to signify that it's you. Mm-hmm. 
So now it's your personal, st- and the main thing is your seal. Because now if I have your seal, I know for a fact I have your identification because this is your crowning marker, mm-hmm. right? So now she take that and she said, okay, so he gave them to her and slept with her and she became pregnant by him. So now let's think about this now. She needed to, she needed, she needed children. She needed a son. The first son died, that Judah's first son died, Judah's second son died, and Judah didn't want to give her his third son. Hmm. Judah, wife's died, he's going to go to a friend. On the way, he finds a prostitute. He said, you know what? I'm going to have me this prostitute. I'm going to sleep with her. She said, okay, I'm going to make a deal with you. Give me your card and your give me give me your card and your seal to hold until you send me my goat. Hmm. He he did that because he just wanted to have sex. So now he ended up doing what his two sons didn't do. Mm-hmm. He ended up get, getting her pregnant. He completed the mission. <laughs> exactly. But, but why he didn't why he didn't choose the Onan method? Like that's how you giving it up when you, with, with prostitutes, bro. Like these these the type of stuff I be scratching my head. Were you drunk? What is wrong with you, bro? What is wrong with you, Judah? <laughs> that's what I'm telling you. Judah is a naughty boy. Judah is a naughty boy, bro. <laughs> we cannot deny this. <laughs> we know back in those times there was a lot of illegitimate children. So yes, but I'm like Judah. Why are you doing that, bro? Like, come on, let's let's. You are ready. You don't have to go all the way now. You are ready. Uh, you're morning, right? You are ready. Meeting with a prostitute, right? Um, mm-hmm. but why are you adding more complications to this? Do you not care? Like, <laughs> so now, right now, what gets me now? She left and she took. She took. She she took her stuff and she took off her veil. She put back on her widow's clothes, right? And then, so Judah. You know, he's trying to pay for his debts and get his stuff back. Mm-hmm. So, I mean, it ain't a good luck, your stuff with a prostitute. Mm-hmm. So he sent his friend back with the goat and to get his stuff. But when his friend get there, he's like, you know, it's funny. He didn't even go. He said, you know what? I ain't even trying to be seen no more. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Let me send my friend. Mm-hmm. Make it look, little, make it look little, a little like, inconspicuous, right? Mm-hmm. The friend ain't final. And so the friend asked the man, so where's the prostitute that, that, that be here? They say, hold on, prostitute? There's never been a prostitute here. Hmm. <laughs> and so he went back in Judah and, Judah and, and, and said, I didn't find her besides. The man who lived there said, there hasn't been any shrine prostitute here. And Judah said, okay, well, I guess I could take this out. Let her, let her keep what she has or will become a laughing stock. After yeah. all, <laughs> I did send her this young good, but you didn't find her. Yeah. <laughs> He'd be like, I look like a sucker, bro. Like, all right, let's just get out of this right now, bro. Like, I, I get you all that. So now, three months later. It's, it's, it's so <laughs> wrong, bro. You're still as a laughing stock to me, though, Judah. You understand what I'm saying, bro? Like, you try to, you, bro. It's like you can't fight the L sometimes, bro. You try to fight the L, but you still end up taking this L right now, bro. All right, you can go with that. Yeah, so three months later, right? This is what a plot really thick is. Three months later. Judah was told, hey, your daughter-in-law Tamar is guilty of prostitution. And, mm-hmm. and as a result, she became pregnant. So now Judah, like, as I think about it now, Judah's like, bro, this my way out. Mm-hmm. Because again, by law, she wasn't supposed to have sex with anybody except Sheila. And Judah was withholding Sheila from, from her. So now, since she's pregnant, that means you broke the law. I could put you to death. And now Sheila never to sleep with you at all. So this is what Judah was really like excited for. Right? And so now we see you there? That way I could transition. Yeah, so three months later, right? We see Tamar was found guilty of prostitution, right? And so now for Judah, Judah said, bring her out unless unless I will burn to the death. So now you gotta think about it. By law. Tamar wasn't supposed to have sex with anybody else except Judah's last son, Sheila. Judah was withholding Sheila from Tamar because he was, he was scared that Sheila was going to die if Tamar was to sleep with him. Hmm. So now, 
Judah's like, this is my way out because now if I can put you to death, Sheila will never have to sleep with you. And that way I can protect my son from this foolishness. So now she's like, Judah was like, yeah, come. What? She pregnant? She didn't do this. She didn't do this evil thing. Let's put her out. Hmm. So now as she was bringing brought up, she sent a message to her father-in-law. I am pregnant by the man who owns these. Oh. And she added, see if you recognize who seal, cord, oh. and staff these are. Mm, that's a blow, bro. I tell you, this woman was playing chess. You understand? Not whatever game <laughs> your boy was playing. This woman was playing chess. Like talking calculated steps. Wow. And you see, then this way Judah had to own up. Judah said, wow, she is more righteous than I. Hmm. Since I wouldn't give her my son, Sheila, and she did not sleep. And he did not sleep with her again. Mm-hmm. When the time came for her to give birth, the, there were twin boys in her womb. As she was giving birth, one of them put out his hand. So the midwife took a scarlet thread and tied it on his wrist and said, this one came out first. But when he drew back his hand, the brother came out <laughs> and she said, so this is how you have broken out. <laughs> <laughs> and so he was named Perez and his brother who had the scarlet thread on his wrist came out and his, and his name was Zara. Perez means breaking out and zero means the scarlet or brightness. Nice. So, I feel, I don't, I don't really know what that about, but I feel like as we read some more, like maybe in Exodus or Deuteronomy or somewhere later in the Bible, it might be like a little nuance or like a little thing that's mentioned, like someone from the line of whatever, which might make mm-hmm. sense. But right there, it's just like, okay, that's, that's an interesting <laughs> A little fact. <laughs> yeah, you know, sometimes the Bibles be super thorough about certain things. But mm-hmm. yes, I mean, that's the story of Judah and, and Tamar. It's just, to me, it's like sometimes the Lord will is always going to be done with or without you. <laughs> right? That's, I mean, that's true. But my whole thing too, though, is like, it's about not being a hypocrite. Mm-hmm. You see the lengths Judah is willing to go through to be a hypocrite? Like, I don't like that. I, I really don't like that. Like, that, that's, that's, that's very messed up. Like, you partake in prostitution, but you want to kill a prostitute. Now, I understand your motive behind it, right? But come on, bro. You can't throw stones if you live in a glass house. See? <laughs> and now you end up getting exposed. Now you end up really being a, a, a laughing stop and embarrassment type of situation. And, and that reminds me of, like, um, when Jesus save the the lady the he without sin cast the first stone situation mm-hmm. you know everybody trying to kill this woman and all jesus said was like he started writing in the sun he's like well whoever whoever sinless y'all i mean y'all just y'all go for it i given y'all permission he without sin cast the first stone. that's a big line right there you know what i mean and like i feel like we all hypocritical in, in some degree and it's just a matter it's just a matter of being being cognizant and just being real with yourself it's just being self-aware because like, I, like, especially in Christianity, it's a lot of things, but it's like self is bad, no self, uh, less of self, right? But you got to be aware of what you're doing in order to diminish that so that you could allow God to come in. I got to know I'm a sinner. Mm-hmm. I got to know that my, un, I have, I, my self is unchristlike for me to be able to open and let God in. And you look at Jacob, I'm, and this, you know, we just covered two stories. Like I'm, like, it's crazy the stuff that Jacob had to go through, but it's to me, it's very interesting the way his sons end up coming out, you know? Like, we see his sons, and, you know, like, 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 like let's just imagine today's, today's day and age. We know people who ain't Christians, and, you know, they might not regard God, but they ain't out here trying to, like, kill people, or they ain't, mm-hmm. out, here, they ain't out here moving that spooky. You know, they might really just have no regard for God and they might just love self-indulgence, pride of life, all, all this stuff. But they ain't out here moving that spooky type mm-hmm. of thing, you know? And these, that like, and all of these people are God's chosen people and we see them moving kind of weird. And I just feel like we could, we could look at J- Jacob's parenting. That probably played a big role because of how much was going on while those boys were being raised. But I feel like when you like a like a pastor's son, or like you like or like you're a member of a family 
or an organization or a group of anybody that's doing the will of God and you are a, a, a legitimate threat, I feel like the devil doubles down on you on you. Or like you 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 don't experience the same type of obstacles that other people experience because I feel like it's so uncanny that growing up though, it's a lot of pastors' children who I see that would just like do a lot of crazy stuff, you know. And like it used to perplex me for a little bit, like, like why y'all acting like this, you know? Like mm-hmm. why why is it that like and 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 like I'd be thinking like your your father knows so much knowledge like he can teach congregation stuff like this but you you miss it and then we see later on in the in the Bible, um, Le- Levi no, what um what Moses brother's name was Aaron um Aaron Aaron's sons moving crazy we see um who is Samuel's Samuel's like um who's who Samuel's. was Samuel under I can't remember it was Samuel's uh, it was uh, Levi. Uh, it was it was Eli. Eli, Eli, yeah. We see Eli's sons were, were like that too, you know. So we see times when you have you have like a leader, like a religious leader, and their children are just wild and <laughs> and just kind of just just they don't care, you know. And I feel like it's more it's more than just like a poet a parenting thing, but it's you gotta understand like we wrestle not against flesh and blood, but by principalities. And so when you see stuff like this, you, like you can't say, oh, they live in this neighborhood. That's not the This is a spiritual warfare, you know, and that's something to be mindful of every single time you decide you stepping out for God, I doubling down, I living for God. And I am an ambassador for Christ. You can't expect the devil to be happy about this. The Bible say the devil is like a roaring lion seeking who you devour. Imagine, right? Being a Christian, it's like you walking outside. In a blood coat, like you want a coat full with blood, like you bait, you bait to the lion. So, whenever you walk outside, but just by being a Christian, you you um you excite the the, the um the lion, you entice the lion, you you get you get his full attention type of situation. And I feel like that's what's happening with this patriarch and his family, because Judah, man, like I, I before I learned about Judah. I just by default look at him like Judah man, that's probably a really good guy. You know, <laughs> it's probably one, he's probably a really good guy, man. You pretty know, because that's a hey, pretty virtuous guy. Like you would think Judah was like Joseph, <laughs> Joseph's qualities because mm. of his historic lineage, you know, and like in, in like the history of life. Like he had a lineage, like this is a strong lineage, like Jesus came from your lineage, like that trumps mm-hmm. everything. But then you have David, you know, and um, we can see where, 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 um, where his daughter-in-law just proved to be more righteous than him. You know, <laughs> we don't know who his daughter was, but we know she married a guy who was wicked in the eyes of the Lord. You know, we don't have no evidence to know that she was a righteous woman at all, but that's who out righteous in you. Why, you know, and so like when, when I look at when I look at um Joseph's siblings and Jacob's sons and stuff like that, I I can see how I can see how they were not living by the book. They were not they did not follow God's law to the T. You know, they weren't like devout and righteous, but we could still see how God used them, and God used their seeds, a generation to generation, you know. And it's important. I feel like this is very important because as Christians, there is a misconception that everyone is perfect as a Christian or that you have to be perfect as a Christian. But we all have sinned and fallen short. Now, I feel like, I feel like you could go a day without sinning, an hour, a week. But you have to understand that we our nature is sin is sin. So... It's one you like like as we like it when we listen to religious leaders and, and sermons and stuff like that, you gotta be you gotta be and like just Christian media and stuff, you gotta be very conscious of the people who per, like perceive themselves to be perfect. Because that's not real life. It's a fairy no. tale you get in soul. A lot of the people in the Bible were very sinful. We've seen their flaws. But that didn't stop God from using them. 
And I feel like this is the main objective of this podcast. We say this many times. We, we try to understand the humanity of people. We try to understand how the people who God used, what they were like. And I don't see how none of them was better than me. You know, I don't see how none of them had an advantage over me. It's just there was some who chose to go against the grain and some who was used even to, despite the way they was living. And that's motivation to me. That's motivation to all of the Christians. That's motivation to everybody searching for truth and all of the believers and followers of Christ. Followers of Christ. Things take a turn for the worse for Judah as he realizes that he is just as complicit as Tamar in the crime that he sought to put her to death for. Meanwhile, Joseph himself is fighting for his own freedom, but not from slavery, from jail. But we'll talk more about Joseph, Potiphar's wife, and slavery in Egypt on the next episode of A Breath of Fresh Air. Tonight's episode included voice acting by Jaden and Janae Roberts, as well as your hosts, Earl Roberts and Nikaz Gay. Remember to go ahead and research on your own in order to get a more firm understanding of tonight's episode. And if you enjoyed it, make sure to like, subscribe, and share with your friends. You can follow us on social media at A Breath of Fresh Air Pod on Instagram and B O F A P O D on Twitter. Thanks, everyone, and we'll see you next week.